Okay, good morning everybody. Um, welcome to Kabbalah Decoded one more, one more time. This morning we're going to be talking about the concept of mind over heart, or head over heart, if you prefer it that way. This is a fundamental concept in uh, Kabbalah, <clears throat> and in fact, we see that the... Um, Sorry, just one second. Um, just making sure. Can you all see where it says Kabbalah decoded? Or no? No? Uh, just type in the chat box if you if you um, if the screen shows Kabbalah decoded or not. If not, that's okay. I will. Yes. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to put up a Sfirot chart and tell me if you can see the Sfirot chart clearly. I know it's a little bit big, but um, can you see this rewrite chart? Yes. All right, perfect. Okay, so <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to look at the Svirot the way they um, the way they appear in the uh, in classic Kabbalistic um, works, <clears throat> and I'm going to explain something very fundamental. <clears throat> As you will see now, there are ten Svirot. There are ten Svirot. <clears throat> you will see on this list over here, which you can't see the full thing because it's um, um, full screen. You know what? Let me make it. Let me reduce it so you can see more of it. How's that? Full screen. You can see everything now? Okay. Should be able to see everything. Okay. So now, you will notice if you count them out that there's actually 11 over here. There's 11 Svirot, really the only 10 Svirot. What, is, what are the Svirot? The Svirot are divine emanations, um, each having a particular quality or character, and these are reflected in the human soul in what are called the powers of the soul. The powers of the soul. So, in terms of the powers of the soul, um, there are also 10 powers of the soul. But it depends on what mode we are talking about. As it depends on what mode we are talking about when we discuss the ten Svirot. Now, the ten Svirot, as you'll, as you'll see over here, there's Keter, Chochma, Bina. Now, Dat is the one that is usually left out of the picture. When we're talking about the Svirot, normally we leave out Dat. We count Keter, Chochma, Bina. And then Chesek Vuri Tiferet, Nesach Hod Yesod, and Malchut, that makes 10, and that would be the 11th one. The reason for that is that when we count Keter, we don't count that, and we count that, we don't count Keter. When is it that we count Keter? When we're talking about the God's will being manifested in the world through these divine emanations, then we count Keter. In other words, <clears throat> if you have a look at the very, very top, um, if you have a look at the very top um, box over here, this corresponds to essentially the question of what is the purpose. Let me just make it a drop bigger, so you can see it more clearly, a little bit more clearly. Okay, for what purpose? In other words, what is this for? What is it all about? What that? Then we would count Keter. Now, the same thing applies, essentially, in the soul. When we're talking about the purpose of our creation, the purpose of the, end of the individual purpose in this world, then we will be talking about a Keter concept. But that's sort of an overarching and overall concept that doesn't necessarily come into focus on a day-to-day -day basis. It doesn't, it's not necessarily something that we have to grapple with or deal with every day. That's something that we sort of set the focus. What's my purpose? Perhaps once in a person's lifetime, maybe once a year, maybe once a month, but it's not an everyday, it's not an everyday thing. In other words, the check against what my purpose is should be on a more regular basis. Obviously, am I fulfilling my purpose? The purpose for which I was created, for which I'm here. That one can do on a, perhaps uh, on, a, on a regular basis even. But to reset and to focus on, uh, on, on purpose, <clears throat> once one has that clear, it's 
not a necessary thing. It doesn't, um, uh, it's not something that has to be done regularly. So therefore, let's leave out for now, <coughs> we're going to leave out Keter, and we're going to focus on the other Sfirot. Now, these Sfirot here, because we're not going to count Keter, these Sfirot will be the critical ones here. Chochma, Bina, and Da'at. I've sort of highlighted the boxes next to them. Um, Chochma, Bina, and Da'at. Chochma is usually translated as wisdom, although any of these translations are inaccurate. Um, Dabina is usually translated as understanding. And that is usually translated as consciousness or knowledge, awareness, connection. Now, these three here are referred to in Kabbalah, these three that we just spoke about, Chochma, Bina, and Dat, are spoken about as they're, they're, they're called Mochin. Mochin meaning intellect. This is what comprises, these three together comprise intellect. These are the intellectual faculties. Will is not an intellectual faculty. It transcends intellect. That's why Keta transcends intellect. It can't be understand. That's why in, in the deepest level of Keta corresponds to faith. It has to do with faith. It's not, it's not something that can be understood. It also has to do with delight, the delight of the soul in God, and the will of the soul to do what it uh, was, so to speak, sent here for, to fulfill its purpose in the world. But we're going to leave that out, as I said before. We're going to focus today on the concept of mochin, on intellect. These three, these three qualities. Now, <clears throat> going down uh, the Svirot, we have the emotional, the primary emotional qualities. These are the primary emotional ones, these five. Um, I don't know if there's a way that I can... All right, whatever. Anyway, you'll see. I got this hand over here. You can probably see it, right? Chesed, Gvura, Tiferet, Netzach, and Hod. Now, <clears throat> when we talk about Chesed, Gvura, Tiferet, Netzach, and Hod, those are the primary emotional qualities, and I'll discuss them in a minute. The primary emotional qualities. Then your sword is more the idea of that, aspect of things, that sphira, or that power of the soul, that influences action. Malchut is action. It has to do with action. Let's go through them. So the, the primary emotional qualities are these. This is the connector. And the last one is the actual thought, speech, and deed. That's or, or what we call action, malchut. Well, let's go through them um, individually. Chesed, as we saw here, is the concept of kindness or love, reaching out, emotional connection. Of course, all of them have a negative quality as well, which can be lust or self-love. So that would be chesed. Now, what's gvura? Gvura, on the other hand, is uh, usually translated as might. But in the soul, it's understood as awe or fear it's also the concept of privacy, making your own space around yourself, not letting people into that space. It's privacy. It's setting boundaries. The negative side could be anger, jealousy, hatred, and so on and so forth. The third quality of character is, in other words, the third emotional quality is called Tiferet. And that corresponds in the soul to the idea of compassion. It also has to do with, since Tiferet is a blend of Chesed and Gvura, although it's more than that, we'll discuss it soon. It's more than just a blend of Chesed. It has its own quality. It's not just uh, sort of, um, you know, uh, what they call um, brown and white cookies or black and white cookies. You know, half the side of the cookie is uh, black, the other half white. No, it's a blend. It's a mixture of the two, but because it's a mixture of the two, it's something else altogether. 
it's not just a mixture, it is beyond the mixture. <clears throat> In any event, Teferit is compassion. Now, you can see that compassion itself is, a, is an attribute of kindness. There's a certain amount of kindness in there. But nevertheless, it's kindness in a sort of a limited way. The kindness is limited to certain um, modes of interaction. Let's put it that way, compassion. In other words, only a person needing compassion, is it appropriate to give them compassion? Which is not true, let's say, for example, of, um, let's say, a, um, uh, a, a someone who's cru a criminal or a, or a very, very, very cruel person. They don't have compassion for a, uh, for a murderer or for a very cruel person. That's inappropriate. <clears throat> um, for that, perhaps, um, might, uh, anger might be, might be appropriate for them, perhaps. Uh, but in any event, that's why we can see that there's an aspect of Gvura because it limits as to who compassion is, uh, who is worthy of compassion. Now, because compassion is a blend of two things, so sometimes one is more dominant than the other. Chesed is more dominant than Gvura, Gvura is more dominant than Chesed. It goes backwards and forwards, and there's always like a sort of a balancing act that's going on in Tiferet. That's why Tiferet corresponds to the concept of variety and change as well. A person has a need for variety. A person has a need for change. We, we see that in our diets, and we see that in the way we dress, and we see that in our relationships. We need variety. We need change. We need some excitement in life. That, that, that's sort of a deferred quality. The negative side of it, of course, is pride. Pe'er, the word pe'er means beauty, but it also means lehit pe'er is to be proud of yourself, to be overly pride in a negative sense. Nothing wrong with being proud of who one is and what one is, but pride in the sense of arrogance, that's a ne the negative side of tiferet, arrogance. And as you can see, it leads to boasting, arrogance, etc. Pride, boasting, arrogance, those are the neg negative sides of tiferet. Now, these are the three primary emotional qualities <coughs> and all emotions essentially really fit into these three qualities a mixture of them one more predominant the other one more predominant tiferet a blend of the two and which is the third thing already etc netzach and hod are branches of uh, netzach is a branch of chesed hod is a branch of Fura, and these are much closer to action they're much closer to action. By the way, all of these qualities correspond in a human being, as we'll see soon. They correspond to various parts of the body as well. Chochba bin Adat correspond to the three levels of the brain. There's three aspects of the brain. The dat is the medulla uh, at the back of the brain, which goes down all the way into uh, the spinal cord, etc. Ches and right arm, Gur is the left arm. Tiferet is the torso, Netzach is the right leg, Hod is the left leg. Yisod is the uh, sexual organ, and Malchut corresponds to actually doing things, using the body to, to do things. It also corresponds to the mouth, to speech, as we'll see also. Let's just get um, these clear now. Netzach, again, is perseverance, confidence, trust, external security in the soul. It's with pushes things through. Netzach really means victory or victoriousness, victory. So in the soul, it's perseverance, confidence, trust, trust in oneself, security in an external sense. The opposite of, uh, of it is defiance and worry. That's the negative side of it, defiance and worry. Okay. Um... On the other side of the column, on the Hod side, coming from Gvura, is Hod is, the, is related to the word Hoda'a, which means acknowledgement and gratitude. So acknowledgement, sincerity, internal security, internal certainty or security, gratitude. The opposite of it is, of Hod is 
deviousness, lying, cheating. That comes from a hoard quality, the opposite of hoard. Your sword, as we see over here, your sword is the connector which connects the emotions to thought, speech, and action. So let's see what your sword does. Your sword, therefore, corresponds to the concept of influence. When it says, Tzadik Yesod Olam, a righteous person, is the foundation of the world, the translation of your sword is really foundation. It's the foundation for these things to come into expression, either in a positive sense, hopefully, or, unfortunately, in a negative sense. So, this is called your sword. Influence, it also is empathy, and it's contrib contributing to others beyond yourself. The, 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 the need that we have to contribute, all of us have this need. We all have all of these qualities in our soul. Now, some of them are more, more predominant than, than others. Some of them are out of whack. In other words, they're sort of atrophied. They don't, they're not operational, which could be very, very problematic. Uh, in many, many cases, this is one of the, one of the uh, ways in which we identify, we can identify Kabbalistically sort of uh, an illness in the person. And when we say illness, we don't only mean a mental illness. Certainly we're not talking about physical illnesses, but we don't only mean a mental illness because mental illnesses would be really up here. We mean emotional illnesses. If any of these things are out of balance, then there's some kind of emotional imbalance and to the extreme, emotional illness. So one of these, uh, again, your sword, one of the aspects of your sword is contributing to others beyond ourselves. It's the connector. It connects our emotions and our intellect to other people, to people beyond ourselves. And it's important that we're not only takers, but we're also givers. It says about, um, <clears throat> in the Talmud, it talks about um, fleas. <clears throat> Flea sometimes translate, some people translate it as mosquitoes, but whatever. Yatush says that the, uh, the, the this, this 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 insect is used very often as a as an analogy or a metaphor for complete negativity. Why? Because it takes and it never gives. <laughs> it takes your blood, it sucks the blood, it doesn't leave anything uh, useful behind. So if it's a mosquito, it leaves you a bump and an itch, but uh, it doesn't give you anything positive, right? And um, it, it's machnis va'ena moitzi. It takes in and takes in and takes in and takes in and never gives out. And that's why your sword corresponds also to the concept of alienation and loneliness. Loneliness, alienation can come as a result of not giving space to other people, in other words, not giving, um, uh, not recognizing that other people m uh, must come into your space. Other people, are, it's necessary to have connection to, to others. Now, it can also happen that a person burns out by being too much out in the world. We'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> okay, finally we get to Malchut. Now, the concept of Malchut in and of itself, Malchut means really, um, and the translation is kingdom. But in the soul, the way we understand it is that it's the concept of humility and it's the concept of significance, how a person feels in terms of his significance in the, the way the world judges him and so on and so forth, significance. Its opposite is meekness, meekness in a negative sense. In other words, being a... Um, uh, a doorstep kind of thing, a doormat, right? Meekness and the meekness, meeknessness, you can say that meekness, spinelessness, a victim mentality, and that's all a problem in Malchut. Being overly meek uh, and overly weak. Uh, there's, a, there's a story that is told um, about the famous Rebbe, the Tzemach Tzedek, the Chabad Rebbe, the third generation, and um, somebody once come to complain to him that he, like, if people are stepping all over him all the time and they're, 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 um, they're, they're just dismissing him and he's, and he's, um, 
he always feels like put down by everybody. And the Tzemach Tzedek said to him, don't lie down on the floor so much and you won't get stepped on. In other words, get a little, uh, you know, guts. Uh, don't, be, don't be so overly humble. Stand up for yourself. Have a bit of um, perseverance, confidence, trust, uh, internal certainty, security. You, you can't m make yourself a doormat. It's not, it's you, you have to make yourself that. And that's exactly what I want to discuss now. There's a, now, um, just again, to, uh, to, to um, just to recap, all of these correspond to the powers of the soul, and they all co also correspond to various limbs of the body. Chokhmim in Adat is the three uh, levels of the brain, right arm, left arm, the rest of the torso, the le right leg, left leg, the uh, organ, and these are thought, speech, and action <coughs> in, uh, in, in a practical sense, actually bringing things out to thought, speech, and action. Now, we know that we are structured physically. Uh, someone's asking if I can share this chart after the class. No problem at all. Um, I can definitely give you the chart. Um, you know what I might do? I mean, I could send everybody the chart, but a lot of people have it already. So uh, what I could do is I could put it into the Dropbox link I could put it into Dropbox, and uh, if you want it, you just go on to the Dropbox link, and it's, it's there where all the videos are in Dropbox. Or I could send it to uh, people if they want. Or I could just put it there to keep it there so that anyone who wants it can get it. Um, yeah? Is that good? All right. <clears throat> so, um, the way a human being is structured, therefore, is the difference between man and animals is that man is upright. Animals are all on the same level. In other words, man, when he stands upright, and when I say man, I don't mean men, I mean mankind. Men, women, children. When they stand upright, so the head is over the heart, and the heart is over the, um, the, uh, the arms and the legs, or the hands and the feet. Now, why is that important? Because we, we're created in this particular way. This is the structure of the human being, and it's there to teach us that that's the way things are supposed to be. The head is supposed to rule the heart, and the heart rules the actions. Now, the word emotions, these are, again, the emotional svirot. The emotions is basically from the, from the word, the, uh, from the uh, Latin, I believe, emotion, the E, stands for X, going outside, and motion, moving outside of yourself, right? So that's what emotion is, acting on the world, moving outside of your inner self and expressing things in the world, expressing one's emotions, generally. So emotions are what move a person, right? Emotions are what move a person. With animals, we see, however, that the intellect, the head, and the body of the animal are all on the same level. The, the head, the heart, and the, uh, let's say, the liver or the stomach, whatever, everything's all on the same level. Because that's an animal doesn't have that capacity that human beings have for the mind, for the head, to rule over the heart. So these are called the heart, and this is called the head. And that's the way it should be. The head has to rule over the heart. Now, why is this important? Because emotions, and this has been found, uh, you know, in, in the last, um, I would say, 20, 30 years, uh, has been a major focus in some branches of psychology, uh, discussing exactly this concept that's been known about for um, hundreds of even thousands of years in Kabbalah. Uh, in fact, it's discussed at great length in, uh, in, in the work called Tanya, which was written about 250 years ago. How Moach Shalit Alalev Betiv O, the mind rules over the heart naturally. In other words, the mind controls the emotions. Naturally, the mind controls the emotions. And therefore, the mind can control actions, how we think, how we speak, 
and how we act in the world, which is all Malchut. Now, <clears throat> let's just uh, explain a little bit deeper. We said that there's three aspects of mind. There's three aspects of, which correspond to the three brains, that would be the medulla, and then the cerebrum and the cerebellum, whatever. Okay, but uh, uh, let's not make too much of a, a big deal about it. Some, some just say that this is the, um, Chochma is the right brain, Bina is the left brain. And this dot would be the middle brain, in other words, the medulla. Okay. Now we know that that uh, the right brain and the left brain have um, very different functions. The left brain is very, very logical and um, um, analytical, and the right brain is much more imaginative and uh, creative. And that's the way really it should be. Because Chochmah is the spark of creation. Chochmah is always coming out of a state of nothingness and it suddenly bursts into, um, into existence. Whereas Bina is sort of the, the intelligence, uh, analytical intelligence, understanding, etc., etc. And that is sort of the focus. Now, how does this work exactly? When we say that the mind controls the heart, each one of these aspects, Chochmah, Bina, and Dat, controls the emotions in a different way. They control the emotions in a different way. Bina, which is primarily rationality, controls the emotions by thinking about things in a certain way, by analyzing things and coming to conclusions in a certain way. Now, let me give an example. Let's say some kind of um, incident, a negative incident, something happens. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, a, uh, two friends, so one is kind of a needy person and uh, she's always calling her uh, always calling her friend one day her friend doesn't answer doesn't answer the phone so immediately the i'm talking in a negative sense now the analysis that the person makes the bina aspect the analysis that the person makes is she doesn't want to be my friend anymore she's angry with me she's had enough of me she doesn't want to talk to me whatever right that explanation to of a, that that uh, that the woman makes to herself my friend doesn't want to be my friend anymore she's sick and tired of me she's uh she, because she's not answering the phone that leads to uh, a, 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 an emotion a state of despair perhaps emotionally or a state of loneliness or a feeling of rejection uh and so on and so forth now whether that you know, that particular belief, that particular analysis was correct or not, uh, is, um, well, how do you know she didn't answer the phone because of that reason? Maybe she didn't answer the phone because her battery died. Or maybe she didn't answer the phone because she's in the middle of doing something uh, and couldn't. She was in the middle of baking a cake. Or maybe she didn't answer the phone because she was um, taking a shower and didn't hear the phone or whatever. Who knows? Like, why, why does one jump to the conclusion? So, that's the concept of how Bina works on the midas, it uh, works on the emotional qualities. Bina works on the emotional qualities by building up a sort of a structure, a structure of beliefs, a structure of conclusions, ways of thinking about things that can become fairly entrenched. Of course, the way to deal with that is to start thinking about things in a different way looking for explanations as to why, what other reasons might there be that the person didn't pick up the phone. Well, she might be baking a cake, she might be taking a shower, maybe her battery died, maybe her phone was off, maybe she's asleep, she wasn't feeling well, she has a headache, how do I know? Right? So, um, that, in this sense, as we said, it's consciousness, knowledge, awareness, intimate connection, etc. That can also be 
it's the key to the emotions, but that can also be the concept of rumination, ruminating on things. You know, we say about a cow that it chews the cud, it's a ruminant, right? Ruminant means that it goes over and over and over and over and over the same thing. A cow has five stomachs because it keeps on chewing the same grass for like, uh, you know, it chews it over five different times in order to properly digest it. The same thing with, uh, with human beings. Human beings who are sort of ruminating on things, using their diet function in a negative sense, they ruminate and ruminate and ruminate and ruminate, and um, automatically the emotions become sort of so embedded that it's very, very hard to change, and, and the rumination can, be, uh, can lead to very, very uh, negative consequences. So the immediate thing, the, the way the way diet should work on the emotions, the way diet should work on the emotions is to make one conscious of higher things. There's 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 various ways one can do it. Uh, diet can be used to shift the focus of one's mind. If one's in a, in a bad negative mood, sort of coming down hard on oneself, one can just use diet to sort of deviate from where one is to, uh, to focus on other things. You focus on something else. For example, if a person is ruminating on something, focus on um, reading a novel. You can't like really read and think about negative things at the same time if you're trying to understand what it is that you read. You're trying to follow the plot or watch a movie. So there's all kinds of ways that one can use that to change the rumination to, 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 um, by using that to absorb oneself in something else, something that requires concentration, go play chess, right? Or go play um, a computer game, whatever. It'll take one out, it takes one out of the rumination that leads to deeper and deeper depression usually. <clears throat> so, um, that can also be, um, used to um, focus on higher things and therefore completely lift oneself out of the uh, the negative qualities. Let me go now to Chochmah, which is really the most important in many ways. The concept of Chochmah, <coughs> this idea of wisdom, intelligence, the main concept over here is really self nullification. Self-nullification means essentially that one doesn't see oneself as anything separate from God's will, from the, 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 when we say the divine image, to a certain extent what we mean when we say that man was created in the divine image means that uh, to put it literally, God has an image of the person in his mind, so to speak, as he is in his essence. So God has an has a has an image of the person, that's the divine image, an image of a person as he is, as the person is in his essence. When one lives up to that divine image, that, or one focuses on that divine image, that leads to a state of self-nullification, but a very positive one, not a negative one. In other words, that one feels oneself as part of something much greater than one is. And one loses one's identity in a positive sense by becoming part of something much larger. So that's the Chochmah aspect. So how does Chochmah function with the emotions? Chokhmah functions with the emotions to make the emotions into, into positive qualities that express one's feeling of being part of something larger, part of something larger, greater than oneself. That's really what Chokhmah does. And that's how Chokhmah rules over the heart. Chokhmah rules over the heart by seeing itself as part of something much bigger than, than the person is in himself. Bina rules over the heart by analyzing things in a positive way, using the power of analysis in a positive way. Dat rules over the heart, over the emotions, by redirecting the emotions, 
Bina reframes the emotions, that redirects the emotions or removes the rumination of the emotions. It stops being so ruminant and so buried in one particular thing, it goes on to other things or focuses, uh, refocuses itself somehow or another on something else. So that would be reframing, and this would be um, stopping rumination um, and, and focusing or refocusing on, on something positive. And that's how really the, uh, the, um, the mind rules over the emotions, the, the head rules over the heart. We can use these things to bring the emotions to a state of purity and to a state of, um, of emotional freedom, essentially. Uh, Ernest, asked, Ernest asked the question, does chewing on cards, so to speak, have intentional value and purpose for us. I uh, participating in this helps us evolve to a greater closeness with our Creator. Yes, if we chew the if we if we chew a, if we chew the card, so to speak, in a positive sense. In other words, we focus on positive things. We ruminate on positive things. Now, the word rumination generally has uh, negative connotations, but if someone can think of a word that's equally um, um, that's positive, that has positive connotations, um, then that would be um, I know, rumination, um, uh, focus, meditation, uh, you could call it perhaps, contemplation, contemplation of positive things. So in other words, that ability to focus and to concentrate on positive things, yes, that has a tremendous intentional value, and purpose, and it helps us evolve to a greater closeness, exactly, a greater closeness with the Creator, exactly. That's exactly what it does. Okay, any other questions? Um... While you're writing questions, I'm just going to do a pause share here to see. Uh, all right, here we go. Okay, that's it, folks. Um, if there are any other questions, I'd be happy to take them. Otherwise, we will call it a day right here. Sunshiny, but we had snow last night. Mm -hmm.